the nature of the sun. When they prayed to sun, there was no answer from the sun. They did not know really in reality what pleased the sun. And what was it that sun required from them? That is what I am trying to explain. That those objects which do not answer you, whom you do not come into communion with, because they cannot lead you, so you have to imagine what they want from you. And this is exactly what was done by the worshippers of sun in the earlier days. Whether they were the worshippers of sun in Egypt or in other parts of the world or in, in Greece or in Italy or wherever they were, the common feature about them was that they were overawed by the existence of sun and its various moods. And they wanted to please that God, being afraid of it. But they did not know how to please it. The result was that they invented their own teachings in the name of an imaginary God. And because they were man-made teachings without guidance from heaven, those teachings were automatically defective. And those teachings were oriented towards uh, revenge, revenge against their enemies. And they were, those teachings were always parochial. With the result that wherever you find sun worship, you always find <coughs> such teachings are, as are extremely harmful for the mankind for the social system of mankind, they are uh, uh, not only unjust, at times they become very cruel as well. For instance, in the name of, of, of sun worship, virgins have been slaughtered at the altar of uh, sun gods. And uh, human life has been sacrificed. Sometimes, large number of human beings have been slaughtered and destroyed in the name of pleasing that son, that God, imaginary God. And to be on the right side of that, of that God, according to them, was to have license to destroy all those who were on the wrong side of that God. And not only this, they also began to see some contradictions in uh, in nature. Some gods who appear to, be, to, to uh, appear to be glorious to them certain to certain times were overshadowed by some other powers of nature who seem to overpower these glorious gods. For instance, when uh, clouds were raised by winds, the sun disappeared, and the rain of the clouds seem to supreme, uh, uh, rule supreme and they seem to be, uh, to have gained upper hand over the sun god. So they studied the phenomenon and some attribute, attributed it to the uh, uh, portions and said the ocean gods are perhaps stronger than the sun god. So they started worshipping ocean gods. And again the same dilemma, what do the ocean gods require from them? How can they please ocean gods? Because they did not know, they could not know, the ocean gods were just imagination of their own imagination and they could not lead them to any path, any guidance. So they uh, imagine things and those who imagine things about how to please such imaginary gods were called, called oracles. And a lot of thought was spun around these imaginative gods. Because this is a fact of life that no such god can ever respond. No such imaginary god can ever direct the people. So when you seek guidance from these gods, you have to go to certain people who imagine, who claim that they come into contact with these people.
which is God. So priesthood was created, which was entirely false, totally consciously false priesthood, which attributed things to their imaginary gods and conveyed those things, passed them on to the ignorant people. So all the misery of those ages, and which was a lot of misery, I assure you, if you read your history, you will be surprised how much cruelty was committed in the name of God, how much ignorance was taught in the name of these imaginary gods by fraudulent priests, and how they became a hierarchy in themselves, how they created their own empires over these ignorant people, and how strong they grew in the name of just falsehood, and what intrigues were played with the great empires and how they were, their downfall was brought about and all the miseries attendant, attendant upon falsehood were created along with these imaginary gods as a consequence of these imaginary gods. So it is not just a question of jealousy on the part of Allah. It is looking at it in a very simple, you know, in, in, in a very superficial way at the whole problem. The fact is that idol worship is not just something which is left at uh, somebody worshipping somebody and that's all. It no longer remains a personal affair at all. It, it, it creates false edifices. It creates false uh, institutions. And with those false institutions, man must ultimately suffer. And because the Holy Quran repeatedly points out that these gods can never be contacted, there is a reason why this has been so much pronounced and so repeatedly pronounced. The reason is that because they cannot be contacted, so whatever is said in their name is man-made. And because those who make things in the name of others, while those things do not exist, are false men, so no good can ever flow from false men. This is as, as simple and as logical as that. So the history of idol worshippers and the history of idol worship is the history of false institutions. <coughs> crooked institutions, fraudulent institutions upon mankind, which created chains in the, uh, to arrest the progress of mankind, which kept them under bondage of total ignorance for thousands of years. And uh, if you remove that idol worship from the history of man, you will see man developing so healthily in, in completely different directions and much more rapid, making much more rapid, rapid progress. So, one of the most important reasons why this is uh, so strongly condemned, idol worship is so strongly condemned by God, is because it is injurious to our own cause. It is inimical to our own interests. And if we indulge in idol worshipping, then we will be committing a social communal suicide. So it is not just a question of jealousy. The second thing, when we further study this in greater detail, the second reason why this is so strongly condemned is that idol worship ultimately leads you to uh, self-aggrandizement and uh, worshipping yourself as man, worshipping your own ego. And this is also true in the light of uh, the history of idol worshipping. Every idol worship nation, a worshipping nation, ultimately ended up with human worship. Pharaohs were created. Overlords were created, 
are the directly uh, temporal heads or uh, religious heads <coughs> but ultimately they stood as symbols of those deities whom they led others to, to worship and because there had to be some living symbol so human beings were ultimately worshipped and man bowed to man <coughs> 